Hey, Megan. Um, congratulations on getting that point, fighting back like that. And I wanted to contrast the task that you guys had today with similar circumstances you had against uh, the rain at home and the last time you were in Orlando, where you guys were put in a situation to have to fight back for that goal, but didn't get it. Did you feel that the team today put in a similar situation, showed any improvement or any better ability to handle the need to scrap back and get that point? Um, I have total belief in this group, in this team, no matter who's on the pitch, no matter how many games we've played, no matter where we're at, on the road, at home. Um, to me, going down, it's never ideal, but it's not the end of the world for our team. I know that we're going to create chances. I know that we're going to possess the ball. I know that we're going to play our style and impose our will on the game. And I was just really proud because uh, we were brave today, really brave. And because of that bravery, we were able to get back in it. And it was a really hard fought point. Um, I wish we could have got three. I think we earned three. I think we created good chances and kept the ball and uh, did all the things that we wanted to. But unfortunately, that just didn't go our way today. We'll go to Caitlin Murray next. So this game uh, now sort of starts off a stretch uh, with the Women's International Champions Cup coming up. So you have five games in 16 days. Obviously, Mark is going to have to do some rotating. But as a player, how do you mentally and physically prepare for a stretch like this coming up? You don't. You don't mentally prepare for this stretch. You take it one day at a time, one game at a time, uh, one minute at a time. I think as long as we live in the present, and focus completely on where we are and how we feel in that moment, we'll be fine. Um, as you can see, this team has a lot of depth. Of depth. Um, you know, when we have internationals here, we have a world-class team. Uh, but when they're not here, we also have a world-class team. And you saw us reach really deep because of injuries into our um, depth, depth. I don't know why I'm struggling with this word, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, today and these past couple of weeks, and we still did the things that we wanted to do, play the style that we want to play. So for us, it's just making sure that each person understands the values and the things that we want to touch on as thorns. And I think everybody on the team does understand that and is fully bought in. And when you have a fully bought in group, uh, the sky's the limit. We'll go to Jeff Kasuf next. Hey, Megan. Um... Two questions for you. The first one, just on Orlando, you know, you mentioned focusing on yourselves. Um, you know, got that. I think they kind of killed the rhythm a bit, or maybe intentionally so, in that second half. Um, do you feel like that's something new from them in terms of that that approach? Um, I mean, even no. <laughs> absolutely not. I mean, if you watch any of their last games, you know that they're going to be very physical. And the point is that they want to interrupt and they want to get their really savvy forwards in behind. Um, and that's what they did today. That's what they tried to do on us. Um, and I think that's their entire game plan is making sure that they disrupt our style and try to disrupt what we're doing and um, then try and get their, their forwards on the ball. We'll go to Grant Little next. You touched on that disrupting a little bit, but it seemed like Orlando got off to a hot start and was able to disrupt the team a little bit at the beginning of the match. I was wondering if you'd talk about how you guys managed to adjust to that and how they managed to disrupt you at the beginning. I think the last really big learning step that our team needs to take is in the match, when we're under pressure, when things are happening, where is the space and what is the opportunity? Uh, Orlando presented a different challenge than we've faced before. And I think we had a difficult time in the first half figuring out exactly what they were presenting us because depending on how they line up and depending on who's pressuring, there's always somebody that's going to be on somebody that's going to be open. And we need to be able to find that opportunity um, earlier in the match. And when we talked about it at halftime, we were able to figure it out and able to understand where the space was. And then you saw us starting to play our, our game and starting to um, pin them in their end. Uh, but I think 
a big learning opportunity for this group is figuring out earlier and during the match without having to have a stop of play, what's open, what's on, how do we beat this team? And if we can do that, we'll be scary good. We'll go back to AJ McCord. Hey, I had a quick follow-up. You talked about just how you guys have um, really honed in on how to play thorn soccer and how to make sure that you do that through the entire match and not focus on the outcome. That sounds like a whole lot of chemistry. And this has been a season where you've had to develop that chemistry with different groups. And so now you're entering this tournament, you're entering a season where the international players are coming back. How do you make sure that as you go through these changes again, you keep that chemistry authentic and intact? Um, that's what a culture is. You know, when, when our players go off and compete internationally, we cheer for them. And we love them and we, we say have fun and, and send them on their way. But when they come back, we welcome them back in and we make sure that they know, um, hey, we're back to Thorne's principles, we're back to Thorne's soccer. And that's with love and care, but it's making sure that we're holding everybody accountable to those standards. Um, and we've been able to do that while they're away. And I'm certain that we're gonna be able to do that when they come back. Um, I think one of the things that also helps is that in years past, we would change our entire style when our internationals were away. We would just try for outcomes, try for points in any way possible. Uh, and that is not the way of the Thorns this year. We are beholden to our style and beholden to what we want to do every single match, no matter who's on the pitch. And when you have players that are, you know, so bought in to that style, then when you bring others, new players in or players that are internationals that have been away, it makes it easier because we're all on the same page. We're all fighting for the same thing and we're all trying to play the same way with bravery and aggression. So I know that was a long-winded answer, but that's that. We have time for one last question and we'll go to Richard Farley. Uh, yeah, my question seems a little bit boring after these last great ones. Um, <laughs> but Kling, I wanted to circle back to the fact that because of injuries and absences, you guys did have a um, more narrow rotation than you normally do. How much do you think that was impacting how you guys approach the game, knowing that more players were gonna have to find a way to go 90 tonight in Orlando? Richard, we just know that anytime we start, we have to go 90. That's just, that's just how it goes. Um, we don't approach the game knowing that um, I might only play 45 or whatever. That's just not the way that this group is. Um, a lot of them, have to dig deep a lot of, uh, and you saw a lot of players dig deep tonight. I mean, huge credit to Ange Salem, um, comes off and is just absolutely obliterated, but was arguably the best player on the pitch tonight. Uh, and that's, that's just the level. That's what we expect every single game from our players. Um, and it's no different whether we have a lot of players on the pitch or a lot of players on the bench or not. Sorry, Kling, I lied just briefly. We're going to do one last follow-up with Jeff Kasu. Fine, Jeff. <laughs> uh, sorry, I did, I did prompt with two questions the first time, but I, I got muted. Um, just wanted to ask you a bigger picture here, if, if you had anything, if not understood, but um, from the tweet a couple of days ago, if there's been any discussion with players league-wide um, at large, or you know, if, the, if there's anything more there that, that you wanted to say. You know, I haven't um, <clears throat> followed up with players and I haven't heard from the league yet, which I find incredibly disappointing actually. Um, and I, I will be doing some follow-up, whether it's talking with my friends on every single team or whether it's talking with the players union or talking with safe sport. Um, I know that this is a problem that happens around the league, whether it is Washington spirit or whether it's any other club and I'm sick of it and it's inappropriate and it's, beyond inappropriate. Um, and I just want everybody to know that this is something that I'm not going to let go. And I'm going to continue getting after it and continue asking the questions and continue holding a high standard because if we cannot protect our players, then we don't deserve to have a league.